Hey guys, and welcome to Wrestling Days. So today's video is gonna have a look at Payback. Um, I left this a little bit because I wanted to see if there's gonna be any more matches added. I also wanted to know if there was gonna be any further injuries. I think what's really interesting about Payback is that the Wyatts are all over the promotional material for this. If you go and have a look at the promotional poster, it's the Wyatt family. If you watch the network and you see the adverts, it's the Wyatt family. Um, the reason for that is because they were going to be in a pretty big match against the League of Nations and it all fell through because of Bray getting injured and then uh, Luke Harper got injured as well. And so the whole thing's been scrapped. In fact, the League of Nations have split up now. So you, you just won't see that match. Um, I also think this explains why Sheamus isn't on the card, why Del Rio's not on the card, why we're not getting uh, Rusev. Um, and I've got to be honest, I'm quite thankful for it because I think the card that we've ended up with is absolutely incredible. I am I am so excited for this pay-per-view. It is easily the best WWE pay-per-view of the year so far on paper. Um, obviously not counting NXT. But um, yeah, look, let, let's get stuck into it because this could have major repercussions going forward. So hopefully it's not just going to be a pointless you know, B show. They're gonna actually, you know, make a big deal out of it. I love the tagline for this. It's it's like the first pay per view of the new era is how they're, you know, kind of saying it and selling it. And it, it does feel that way. It really does feel that way. So um the first match then is on the pre show and it's gonna be Ryback against Kalisto. We saw this at WrestleMania, but uh I gotta be honest, I, I wasn't I, I wasn't it wasn't a disaster, but it's it's not a match I want to see again. This is easily the worst match on the card. I'm glad it's on the pre-show and, and that's it. No one can really come out of this looking good. Ryback is, is just had chance after chance after chance to connect with the audience. He uh, can't do it, basically. You know, he's got a great look. Um, he's got... I was going to say an okay gimmick. It's not. It's absolutely awful. <laughs> um, but it's, you know, he's he's got that look about him, but he just can't talk and he can't really do a great deal in the ring and he doesn't really play to his strengths, which is his strength. He started doing it in the past few matches. You'll notice he started to, you know, hold his opponent up in the air whilst doing a suplex for a, like a long time, very much like Davy Boy Smith used to do. Um, and uh, there was a great moment at WrestleMania where he literally picked Kalisto up, marched him up the stairs, and just hurled him back into the ring. That's perfect. That is exactly what Roy Back should be doing. Um, but I don't see enough development in him. Um, so I wouldn't want to see him win. Uh, I just think they need to book Kalisto better. I think if they book Kalisto better, everything would be fine. He just needs to go up against someone that he can really have a good battle with, a good war with. Um, and it's difficult to know who that person is. I, I would love to see him go against Sin Cara. I think they could put on a fantastic match, a really nice little intricate wrestling match you know, that lucha style. Um, and I'd be really interested. It's been a while since we've seen stuff like that. So um, I'd be really interested to see that. So there's options for them. But I think Ryback wins. And I think then Ryback drops it to Cena or someone like that further down the road. Um, so I think they go with Ryback. Personally, I would, I would keep it on Kalisto. And I would just look to put him in a better feud. Next up, we've got uh, Corbin going up against Ziggler. Um, this is a bit of a grudge match. Uh, should be fascinating. Should be hard hit in. Uh, don't think it'll be very long. Um, and hopefully Corbin gets the win. Corbin needs the win. Uh, obviously, he's new on the roster from NXT. So we'll have to see if that's the way they go. It wouldn't make much sense to give it to Ziggler. Uh, because then obviously you know Corbin kind of stalls at the first hurdle and and he, and he's not his character just is not that guy his character you know if you don't know Corbin for quite a long time fans were counting uh how quickly it was taking him to finish his matches literally one two three four five six seven bang end of days one two three the match was done and he would do that on a weekly basis got a bit boring um but he is he is 
supposed to be a dominant force. He is supposed to be, you know, um, someone that can just bulldozer through his opponents. I'm hoping he does that to Ziggler. I love Ziggler, but Corbin needs a statement. And I think they will book him that way. Next, we've got uh, Enzo and Cass going up against the Vaud Villains. This is the final of the uh, tag team tournament to find the number one contender. Um, I am desperate for Vaud Villains to win. I really do worry about what would happen if uh, they don't because, you know, they they really need to get bedded into the main roster. They're not like Enzo and Big Cass. They're Enzo and Big Cass, you know, Enzo in particular can talk. And so they are an attraction. You know, you want to see them because what the hell are they going to say this week? Vaud Villains don't have that. Vaud Villains are just really tight in the ring. Um, you know, they do the basics really well. They've got a couple of spots. Obviously, they've got a really strong gimmick. And I just think they could be a really good team. Um, but you've got to book them so carefully. Uh, and I just don't see how them picking up a loss here is, is going to be beneficial to them. If anything, you know, winning this tournament should be a real badge of honour. Um, I'm not saying they go on to, you know, face New Day and win the titles, but they could live off winning this number one contenders tournament for a while. And uh, that's that's the kind of, you know, gloat they should be looking to, to have. I'm desperate for board villains to win this, um, but I fear that it could be Enzo and Big Cass, which, you know, I, I can't, can't say I'd have a massive problem with, but... Hmm. Come on, forward villains. Next, I've got Ambrose against Jericho. Uh, this has had a pretty decent build. I think it's weird how they're using Jericho this time around. I think it shows that they don't have much confidence in the new talent. Plus, also the fact we've had so many injuries means that Jericho's not being used to put over up and coming stars. You know, you, you would have thought this would be Corbin against Jericho. Corbin gets the win. But Jericho's been booked really strong and now he's up against someone that doesn't need help, doesn't need that push. Um, he's up against Ambrose, who's one of the most over guys on the whole roster. So, a little bizarre. I'm into it. Um, I think Ambrose wins. I think Ambrose needs to win after that Brock Lesnar match at WrestleMania. Um, and I'm looking forward to a pretty exciting match. Jericho can take this loss move on it's not going to hurt him one bit so uh yeah i just think this could be a, a a decent match next got miz against cesaro for the intercontinental title and uh i hope they keep the title on miz i think miz is doing some really good work at the moment him and maurice um cesaro could be excellent as an intercontinental champion but i just don't think they would give him the time i would want cesaro to win the title and then hold on to it easily you know easily to SummerSlam Survivor Series time um, but I fear that he would just drop it a month later um, this Intercontinental belt is just it's a sham it really is it's really it's just like a hot potato getting passed around um, I'm desperate for it to settle down I, I, I'm happy with the Miz I think Miz and Maurice have done fantastic work Maurice in particular you know has been a fantastic addition so I would I would keep the belt on them, and I think WWE will. There's no real reason to change. Um, Cesaro I think can easily take this loss and still be bobbing around that kind of upper mid card. Um, there has to come a point where he breaks through to the main event. There has to come a point where they take a chance. And if this is the first pay per view of the new era, maybe we don't have to wait too long. Watch this space. Next, got the women's title match. Really excited for this. Charlotte against Natalia. It, we've seen it several times before. Never disappoints. But now Bret Hart is going to be in Natalia's corner. Um, I I think they keep it on Charlotte. I think this is just a, a bump uh, that she has to overcome uh, in her reign. But I would love Natalia to win. I think Natalia has... Just one of the best women's wrestlers um, that WWE have, have really ever had. Uh, she's been on the roster a, a while as well. And she's she's tasted success, but not enough. Um, she she really, you know, deserves to, to win this. Uh, Brett in the corner. 
Charlotte's had a little bit of a time with the belt. Um, I think they keep it on Charlotte. I think the Charlotte experiment is just working really, really well. Um, but oh, I, st I think this will be tight. I think they'll be tight. I want Natalia. They'll keep it on Charlotte. Next, Zayn against Owens. This should be mouth-watering. Absolutely mouth-watering. Cannot wait for this. Um, you know, 14 years in the making, all that kind of stuff. I just don't know if it's not coming a bit too soon. I want this to have a match, but then just some kind of stupid finish. I want, I want this feud to run and run and run. I want this to be a feud of the summer. Um, and I want there to be several of the matches, loads of stipulations, all that kind of stuff. Uh, I don't know how they do it. I don't know if there's interference. I, I just don't know. But uh, I would want some... It sounds crazy, I know, but I just want some kind of screwy finish um, so that this feud just keeps going on and on and on. Next, we get the big announcement from Vince, who is going to run Monday Night Raw going forward. Um, is it going to be Steph or is it going to be Shane? Now, for me, I think that he goes with a third option. And I think that option is going to be someone like Mick Foley. Uh, or it could be uh, Kane. Uh, or it could be Vince himself. Or it could be... I want to say Daniel Bryan, but I, d I don't think it will be. I don't know, you know, I think there's a few options there. Could be Eric Bischoff. He's got a DVD coming out soon. Um, don't think it will be. It's really difficult. I don't think he goes with Steph because that didn't work. You know, the ratings were down. This is the new era. blah de blah de blah I don't think that's the right way forward. I don't think he goes with Shane because um, I think that Shane has got a few other things he wants to go to do. And so I don't think Shane's actually around for much longer. I think the plan was always he would stick around for a month or two after WrestleMania and then make his excuses and go. This could be leading up to, a, you know, Vince could come out and say he can't decide. How can he choose between, you know, his daughter and his son? And uh, so there'll be a match, you know, SummerSlam or something like that, um, where it's, it'll be Triple H against Shane. Triple H against Shane. Winner gets to run. We're all going forward. Maybe Triple H picks up the victory. And then that's how they can explain it. Uh, or, as I said, it could be he swerves everyone and gives it to option C. He could give it Foley because Foley's got a new show on the network, Holy Foley. But it's just how do you explain him giving control of Raw to Foley? I'm not sure. Um... It's gonna, that's going to take a little bit of work. I'm very interested to see what comes out of that, though. And uh, I do think there'll be some surprises. I really do. That then leads us to the main event. Main event, Roman Reigns, AJ Styles. The big uh, kind of focus on this is uh, are Gallows and Anderson going to get involved? Are they working for AJ? Is Finn going to make an appearance? If you're going to debut Finn Balor, you might as well do it at a show like this. Um, you know, that would be another, that would be another twist. We'll have to see. I think that, I think it's a no brainer. I think Roman wins this. I don't think anyone's, you know, doubting that. I mean, Jesus, I'd shave my beard off. I'll tell you now, I'd shave my beard off if AJ Styles became the new WWE champion because it's just not happening. Um, I'd love him to, don't get me wrong, I'd absolutely love him to but they are fully on board the Roman Reigns boat. So, yeah, that that's that's not happening. But the the big story is Gallows and Anderson going to get involved. Are they working for AJ? Is AJ going to turn heel? Um watch this space. I want AJ to win this. I know that Roman Reigns will um which kind of makes it a bit of a flat main event which is a bit disappointing. Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. Don't forget you can follow me on Twitter at Wrestling Days UK. Uh, I will be live tweeting during the show. Uh, if you haven't subscribed, it'd be brilliant if you did. Cool. Thanks a lot for watching. Really do appreciate it. Enjoy payback. Bye for now.